Okay, I'm Diana Leaf Christian. I'm 63. I um, travel around and advocate eco villages, do workshops on intentional communities, how to start them, how to thrive in them, how to help people have more trust and connection, and reduce conflict. And I speak at conferences, and I've written two books, and I have an online newsletter that I love called Eco Villages. And um, I do an Eco Village slideshow all over the place. From my point of view, uh, what a person would gain if they lived in an intentional community, an eco-village, a co-housing neighborhood, any kind of intentional community, are a number of benefits that certainly exist outside of community, but more intensely in community. Um, for one, you will have a lower ecological footprint because you're sharing resources with others. Um, here at Earth Haven, for example, we have a tractor, not many tractors, just one. Um, you you can co-own large items because you don't need it all the time and you can share it. If you eat food together, you get a volume discount on buying food in bulk, which of course reduces your food bill. There's all kinds of ways and also reduces your impact on the planet because you might be growing a lot of your own food, cooking once for all these people. Um, so there's a lot of ways that it's ecologically more sustainable. Here at Earth Haven, for example, we're off the grid. We live in passive solar homes that we've built ourselves without bank loans. We uh, have roof water catchment and we use water from streams, I mean not streams, but springs, and we have a well. Um, we, we grow much, not much, but starting to grow more and more of our own food here at Earth Haven. Um, we have composting toilets. We do all kinds of things to lessen our impact on the planet and increase our happiness and our well-being and basically put our ecological lifestyle values where our mouth is, put our values where our lifestyle is pretty much. So that's one benefit. Not everyone lives in an eco-village, but almost anyone who shares resources is having a lighter impact on the planet. So that's one benefit of living in community. Another benefit is that it's safer to live with a bunch of people who know you. This is particularly true for children, for old folks, and for women. Um, I can walk anywhere on this property in the middle of the night and the scariest thing I have to think about is bears, which is not so scary because they're little and they run away, especially if you take your jacket and raise it up and say, <sighs> and that make the bear thinks, oh, that's not lunch, that's something bigger than me. But anyway, the point is, there's not, there's not the fear of other folks. Now, in urban communities, it's not quite the same, but if you live with a bunch of people who know you, they know you're not a stranger, they know you're their neighbor and friend, they're there for you. There's many eyes on the street, to quote a city planner, Jane Jacobs, right? And so, um, this is it's beneficial, particularly older people thrive in, in communities, and for children, if you've got agreements that the cars are parked over there and not in the way and that you drive slowly, there's more safety for children playing as a herd of kids roaming the whole community. Um, in safety, all the parents can see who the kids are outside the window. We all know all the kids. There's many aunts and uncles, as it were, to look out for the kids. So it's, it's got safety. It's also healthier. Um, there's all kinds of studies that show if you have daily frequent interactions with other people, your immune system is healthier. Really, it's true. Um, and you, you, you tend to be uh, living at a higher level of health than you'd live if you were living in a tiny apartment in a giant city on a skyscraper and you didn't know your neighbors and you didn't know the people that you took the subway to work with and you didn't know a lot of people except for when you had specific social interactions with your friends. Living in community, you're connected with folks. You're part of that web of trust and support and connection that we're genetically programmed for, I think, being herd animals as a species. I think, not herd maybe, but flock, and school of fish, school of humans, we're supposed to be with other humans. And so it, it's particularly good for older people because older people tend to live longer, healthier, more functional lives in community or in connection with other people. Okay, another benefit, ah, 
you grow as a person. You get to know what you're like more than you would know if you didn't have all those other sources of feedback who are willing to give you feedback. <laughs> Boy, are they. So you get to find out what you shine at, what you're really good at. You get appreciation, you get acknowledgement, you get thanks. You get to find out, oh, I didn't realize I was so good at X skill or Y characteristic, but I am and I can help the community and people thank me. You also get critical feedback. If your mom and dad tell you, oh, you know, you do this behavior, we don't like it, would you change it? You can go, oh, mom. If your partner, your love partner tells you, um, oh, you know, you do this behavior, uh, oh, don't like it, would you change it? You can go, really, that's just your issue. Would you please get over it? But if seven people <laughs> over time give you the same feedback, you might go, hmm, maybe I ought to take a look at that. So what I think is that feedback in community is helpful, painful, and free. You could pay all kinds of money to a life coach to help you get to your goals and what you should focus on. You could pay all kinds of money to a psychotherapist, a bodywork therapist, a healer, to get at your issues. Or you could listen to the feedback in community. It's perfectly free and it's probably dead on. So that's another benefit. You can also learn new skills in the same category of growing as a person. Um, I have a friend at Twin Oaks who uh, can, she's a woman friend, who uh, drives a backhoe, a tractor. She can split wood and split kindling, uh, fell trees, uh, haul around logs. Uh, she can do all kinds of things. She can cook for 80 people. Um, all kinds of, of skills that she didn't have before she lived at Twin Oaks. I myself can um, design a home site according to permaculture principles, uh, work with rebar and concrete. I know how to screed concrete. What the heck does screed mean? Well, now I know. Um, I can plaster a wall with earthen plaster, uh, read the trimetric meter on my photovoltaic system. I know amps from volts. What are the batteries? I know all kinds of things. I can facilitate a meeting, draft a proposal, take minutes for a meeting, conduct a mediation between my friends experience a mediation when I'm the one who's called to have a mediation because I did something. I know how to do stuff I didn't know how to do. You feel a sense of support and connection with like-minded friends. You and they are engaged in the same activity for, for the purpose of your community. What's our common purpose? Why are we doing this? We're going in the same direction, doing the same thing with folks who have the same values, interests, lifestyle pretty much as ourselves. If the community's been well organized to start with and they have a common purpose, which I hope they do. Um, and then that feels good. It feels like a sense of we. You know, Taoist leadership, we did it. It feels wonderful. And you feel a sense of trust and support and connection, uh, ideally, when things are working well. Um, you feel like, uh, you, you can call upon your neighbors, you can call upon your friends. Do you need a ride to the airport? Do they need you to come and get them from the airport? Do you need a certain kind of double-walled polycarbonate? And my friend down the road is going to give me his, which I gave actually to my other neighbor, which gave to him and now myself and another neighbor need some, so it's coming back around. There's this field of support. And I feel like I'm living with a whole bunch of brothers and sisters and cousins, and I've never gotten so many hugs per week in my life. And this is a good thing. And lastly, it's way more fun than living on your own somewhere or with your nuclear family, which is nice, in a suburban place, driving in your car to the mall, to soccer practice, to your job, taking kids to school, driving back to your house in suburbia. I think this is a lot more fun. Um, movies, Tai Chi, Qigong, nonviolent communication study group, which I'm going to tonight, um, spontaneous ultimate frisbee, soccer, uh, all kinds of fun things that you and the group can do together. We all watched the election results. We don't actually have TV here. We had to do it online. And we were all crying and laughing and cheering together. It's more fun. So those are some of the reasons somebody might like to live in community.